Hello and welcome to Kubla Software's video demonstrating how to use the grid method spreadsheet. There are many ways to calculate the earthworks cut and fill volume. We have discussed these before in our video and blog, how to calculate cut and fill for earthworks projects. One of the methods discussed is the grid method. And today we will show you how to use the grid spreadsheet to calculate cut and fill. You can download a copy of our spreadsheet from our blog it also includes the cross-section sheet, which you can learn how to complete in our next video. So what is the grid method? The grid method allows you to estimate the cut and fill volumes of an earthworks project by rationalising the site into a grid of cells. The cut and fill of each cell is calculated and then all the cells with fill are added together and the same for all the cut cells. The volume of each grid cell is estimated using this formula. The volume V of a grid cell I equals the areas A of the cell multiplied by the difference between the average existing ground E and the average proposed ground E. Cells with a negative difference for a cut are added together to find the total cut volume and cells with a positive difference fill are added together to find the total fill volume. So what does the spreadsheet do? Well, depending on the number of grid cells in your grid, the sum will need to be completed tens to hundreds of times, and this can be very time consuming. Our spreadsheet is a great tool to speed up the calculation process because it, one, calculates the difference between E and P for every vertex, which is then written in gray. Two, it shades the cell, either blue for fill or red for cut. Three, it calculates the average of every four vertices, and this is shown in a second grid to the right. And number four, it calculates the overall total cut, fill and net volume. So the spreadsheet does the calculating for you once you've entered the existing and proposed levels. How to record the grid data. First of all, you need to print your site plan which shows the existing and proposed levels defined. Then the second thing to do is to check the units and scale of your plan and decide on the size of the grid squares that you need to use. So my plan is in metric units, so I've used centimetres for the grid. So you can decide then the size of your grid squares that you need to use. The third thing that you need to do is either draw your grid or download one from the internet. We've used a website called Incompetech to do this. And then the next thing that you have to do is label the grid lines. So the X axes are A to Z and the Y axes 1, 2, 3 and so on. Where each line intersects on your grid, this is called a vertex and is represented as a cell on the spreadsheet. You then need to take off the elevations from your site in the grid. Once you've established the grid, um, and have overlaid it onto your site plan, you need to take off the existing and proposed levels and write them next to each vertex for every grid square. For example, showing one way to do this is in the photo. So it's key that you use a fine pen or pencil here so that they still remain legible. Okay, so in this example, the elevations are indicated on the plan using contours. And you'll find that plans usually have contours or points but sometimes other elevation features like building pads or slopes. As a result, it will often be the case that there is not an exact elevation at the intersection line of the grid cells. Therefore, you have to make a judgment and extrapolate the best you can. For instance, if a vertex lies between two contour lines, you can just take the midpoint between them. It's not always easy, but it is an estimate after all. And sometimes you just have to use your best judgment and knowledge of site visits and photos to guess the elevations. Now you've recorded all of your data, it's time to put that data into the spreadsheet. So open the spreadsheet that you've downloaded and select the grid method example tab so that you can see our example. You'll notice that this sheet is protected and cannot be amended. However, we recommend that you review this sheet to understand what your finished grid should look like and refer back to it during your data input. Second thing to do is to open the tab called grid method. So this is the tab that you will be then able to edit and enter your data into. Now that you're in the correct tab, 
enter your units of measure and the dimensions for your grid squares that you've already decided and add the unit of measure, for example, meters, feet or yards and the dimensions of the grid cells in world space, for example, one meter by one meter. Fourth thing to do is for each grid vertex, you then add your data into a cell on the spreadsheet. So one cell on the spreadsheet represents one vertex on your grid. Each vertex on the grid should have existing and proposed elevations recorded. And each cell can take two values in the format existing elevation forward slash proposed elevation. A vertex is the intersection point between grid lines and therefore the vertex B2 on your grid is cell B2 on the spreadsheet grid. So once you've entered the data, you have your cut and fill volumes and calculated in each grid cell the total volume plus the net volume for the entire grid. You can now use this data to estimate the cost of your project. At Kubla, we also make an application for calculating cut and fill. This is called Kubla Cubed. It's an easy to use and affordable cut and fill estimation software. The free version that's available is Kubla Cube Lite, and you can use this to calculate flat areas against existing topography. On top of that, in Kubla Cube Professional, you can calculate against complex proposed surfaces like trenches, roads, retaining walls, and slopes. There are many advantages of using software over a spreadsheet, such as the speed, the ability to display the models in 3D, and the capacity to export cross-sections and drawings of your project. If you complete a lot of cut and fill projects, it's worth checking out our dedicated cut and fill software, Kubla Cube, to save you time and money and for a superior reporting and visualisation experience. Good luck with your projects. You can find the links to the spreadsheet and Kubla Cubed in the description. If you have any questions, please post in the comments.